they underestimate how how much he can actually pull <laughs> with a spy, space suit on. Yeah, and now they've made improvements. So Ye Guangfu is coming out of that airlock while Jai Jigan is waiting in line. Ye Guangfu will be stepping onto that robotic arm. Now in front of him, you can see that white structure there. That's the end of the robotic arm. And behind him or on your right is the working station. He is waving to the camera with the sun shining through. A breathtaking image there, incredible. And he's saying, I'm out, I feel fine. And ground crew is saying, copy that. We can hear a round of applause from the ground crew. A celebratory moment, critical step as well. Now he is floating, but he is tethered to that handrail. And like we mentioned earlier, while in space, everything needs to be tethered all the time, right? The tools, yeah. devices, the astronauts. Yeah, you don't want to float off. In the, uh, the American version of the spacesuit, they have mm -hmm. a little compressed uh, gas mm. to help you get back. But well, as I said earlier, once you push the gas out, it really makes you spin. So how much of that is actually useful? Um, right. Has not, fortunately, that has never been uh, has never been tested. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think people really want to test it. And earlier, we see that Ye Guangfu was holding some kind of devices, probably the foot restraint, because when working in weightlessness, uh, it works better if your foot is being put into a foot restraint, just like skiing or snowboarding. Right. So every time they come out to conduct spacewalk or operations, will they will bring that foot restraint with them. And let's see this time what they will do with that foot restraint because for the last spacewalk, they actually installed the foot restraint onto the end of the robotic arm and Judge Gan was tethered to that robotic arm uh, using that foot restraint. And this is a screwdriver, I believe. Yeah, what? Uh... Yeah. Every time they will bring several devices, tools with them. Okay, that's the command from ground crew saying that the robotic arm will be getting into position. And this time will be Ye Guangfu tethered to that robotic arm and Jai Zhigao will be crawling. Right. The last spacewalk, it was Jai Zhigao who was tethered to that uh, robotic arm. There you go. He stepped on that foot restraint. And it's very difficult to step on it, actually, because you cannot see that clearly. He cannot even see his foot, so he's going to have to rely on some help from his partner out there, pointing some right. directions. But on the other hand, they train so much on Earth. Uh, That's like true. Second nature. That's true. Yeah. They've trained thousands of hours for that. He's unhooking from the space station and hook on to that working station. Yeah, these are not only very brave people, they're very patient people as well. <laughs> right, because everything moves slowly in space, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't want to, things to move too fast. Yes. Yeah, yes. if the robotic arm moves too fast and then you hit somebody else, then uh, that, that, that could be disastrous. This is devastating. Yeah. yeah, so everything is strictly monitored and controlled so that it can be a safe operation for the two astronauts. They cannot afford any tiny mistakes. That could yeah, be deadly. there's no remedy for any. Right. Yeah. So it's getting dark. Remember, this is a highlight we're showing you from the earlier spacewalk. The entire spacewalk lasts about six to seven hours, but we are showing you a compact highlights. We're just showing you some of the most breathtaking moments of that spacewalk. I believe this is Jai Jigong coming out from the airlock. He's turning on his helmet light out there, also waving yeah. to the camera. <laughs> yeah, from this you can actually tell how slow they were moving. Yeah. Like, the sun has already Yeah, where's my sunset? Set. It's already, yeah. Oh, it's, it's a They've completely experienced dark a field, yeah. uh, space station sunrises and space station sunsets, I guess. Exactly, yeah. So what would you be particularly looking at for the space station? Which part do you think is the most exciting part that worth noting? Well, personally, I'm an astronomer. So this, uh, this station has a lot of um, astronomy kind of experiment. There was actually be a separate, um, separate module 
um, called uh, CSST, Chinese Space Station Telescope. Mm -hmm. They'll be flying in the same orbit. It, it would not be attached to the space station. Otherwise, the space station is going to block the view. Mm -hmm. um, but it will fly on the same orbit, slightly away from it. Once in a while, you come in and you can, uh, they, they can perform the uh, spacewalk to go in there, refuel it, and, and, do, and do the repairs or upgrade it, hopefully. Mm. Um, and that thing has, it's essentially a Chinese version of Hubble, but with 300 times the field of view, um, so you can collect data more often and you can look for things that exp something called transient sources um, that, that just blow up instantaneously. Um, so you don't have enough time to move things very slowly to point towards it. If you have, have it already in your field view, it's a lot easier. So that's uh, that will be quite important. So this is the Xuntian telescope you were yeah, saying, yeah. right? Sh Xuntian is the Chinese word for a sky survey. That's what it means by, uh, so the, by that a large That will be field. launched after the space station is completed. Yeah. 23, 24, like yeah, that many scientists, stuff. engineers are super excited about this. Yeah, um, so if you remember, Hubble had problems uh, with its optics and they have to remedy that. Uh, fortunately, mm -hmm. when they had the space shuttle, and this time if anything needs doing, or I'm hoping they can build a Build, build it larger, you know, um, they, they can build um, one possibility. It's, it's not under consideration, but one possibility is you can launch a lot of different mirrors mm -hmm. and have them focus, uh, have a focal res receiver on the space station itself. Right. Then you have an enormous, um, essentially enormous um, mm -hmm. telescope. So the uh, right. possibility is endless. Yeah. Well, it looks like we are having a good mission as of now. Do you think we're going to have more space box for the Shenzhou 13 mission? I mean, this is the second one already. Um, seeing how training centric this one is, um, the third one, may, in my opinion, probably wouldn't happen. Um, but you never know. Uh, somebody on the ground crew might say, my, my thing on the checklist is very, very important. Is worth another right. goal because those space suits they, they, they can only be used for fifteen times. You don't want to waste them. Um, right. So only for critical tasks. But as I said earlier, anything that contributes to safety is a critical task. Right. So it depends on. Yeah. A lot of things. Well, they are more yeah. than two months into this mission. They will be staying, you know, for the entire mission as six months or so. They'll be spending their New Year up there, they will be spending their Spring Festival up there. So we wish the astronauts a Happy New Year in advance. Thank you very much, Professor Zhang, for staying with me. Appreciate it. No, my pleasure. Now the Chinese mainland reported 158 new locally transmitted COVID-19 cases on Saturday. 155 of them were reported in the northwestern city of Xi'an. The city of 13 million is in its fourth day of lockdown to 